Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are finally getting stuck into the truck project. Alright guys, welcome back, and um, I know it's been a while, but uh, I promised the truck and we are going to start getting stuck in. In the previous episode, I talked about uh, what we're doing, the plans for the truck, and uh, there were lots of positive reactions for you guys, so I'm very happy about that. The Alferrari is not forgotten. It is still uh, going in the background. I've got a bunch of refining to do on it to uh, get it ready for um, future use, but... Uh, I will filter in our Ferrari uh, content in with the truck project now so that I can keep things flowing and moving. So those of you who missed the uh, introduction, I'll just go over things again. So basically this is a 1954 Australian delivered Ford F600 truck. So the cab is identical to that of an F100, but it's actually on a bigger chassis and uh, that is what I need for my purposes. I want something to hold the cars around, but also look good while it's doing it. All right, and this is the donor chassis that I'm gonna be using, and the running gear, which is a 1995 Toyota Coaster bus. Um, I apologize for any noise in the background, there's uh, construction going on next door, but uh, basically the reason I've chosen a bus is uh, it makes a lot of sense. At first it might sound odd, but uh, I, considered a bunch of different options. In um, in America, you probably use an old F350 or something like that that you can get relatively cheaply and uh, that would be the perfect underpinnings. But they're not cheap or readily available here in Australia. So uh, that's not really an option. The Toyota Coaster bus is actually a fantastic option because this is underpinnings are basically a Toyota Land Cruiser. It's a, uh, a Land Cruiser engine, which is one of the most common vehicles uh, on the road in Australia. There are parts available everywhere and these things run forever. This particular um, bus is a nice fresh one. Uh, it only has uh, just shy of 300,000 kilometers. These things will easily do in excess of a million kilometers. So uh, this is a good basis to start with. I looked at light trucks, but the issue with light trucks is uh, they generally have a solid beam front axle and you can't lower them. So uh, this actually has torsion bars on the front, which uh, means that you can uh, easily raise and lower the front as much as you like. And the rear is just adjusting different leaf springs. Uh, Jay Duca uh, of Low Standards actually is the one who put me onto this. And uh, this is a great option. I never would have thought of a bus, but this is a perfect option. A lot of people said, why don't I turn this into a camper? And that's what lots of people do with these buses, but I don't get campers. For me, it's not a thing. I'll either want to sleep in a tent if I want to camp, or I'll sleep in a hotel or an Airbnb. I'm never going to, I don't need that weird hybrid in-between thing. It's great for some people, it's not for me. There were other people saying, why don't I just sort of cut the back of it off and seal it up and put the, uh, the uh, bed on that? That would be far easier, but uh, it would be probably the ugliest vehicle on the road. And that's not the point. That's not what I'm doing here. I want a really cool old truck to haul my cars around. And that is the point. So that is why I'm using this uh, bus chassis. And this is a good running, working vehicle. So it should be a relatively easy project. I need to... Uh, cut this bus up into bits, but I'm keeping all the running gear, all the wiring, everything out of this bus, and then putting the cab of the truck onto this chassis and uh, and just making it all work in that cab. So uh, I've been looking forward to this for a while. So now I need to go over to the truck and do a bunch of measurements before I dismantle anything. All right, so I've done a bit of uh, looking around and working out the measurements I need. And really the main measurement I need is, is the distance between the center of the wheel and the cab, because that's really the, uh, the main thing that I'm going to, to check is putting the cab onto the bus chassis to line up perfectly with the front wheels. And the next thing to do is to start trying to pull it apart. Thank you. 
I am absolutely amazed. I have not had one bolt snap off yet, touch wood. Uh, these are 70 year old bolts that have probably never ever been removed and they are still coming out. Um, the ones for the guards are spinning, so I'm getting onto the bot on the nut on the bottom, but these are spinning in place. Um, so there's not a lot I can do about that. I'm gonna have to cut those off, but uh, I am extremely impressed. Well, that was a lot of work to get one side off. I ended up cutting off most of the bolts underneath. It's just easier to cut them off. And uh, mostly because I have only one set of uh, Imperial sockets. I have no other Imperial tools because I don't have uh, any Imperial vehicles. And when I put this back together again, it's all gonna be with metric fasteners because everything on the bus is metric, everything I own is metric, and everything made in Australia, even the Fords and things like that are all in metric these days. So we're... Uh, Going to move forward and do the other side. there's a bunch of cutting there and we've got the front end all completely off I don't need anything else from the front of this um, or maybe this uh, radio support mount but that's about it um, all of the other panels are off and separated which is great so now we have to start working on the cab itself get the uh, seat out and I can't get the passenger door open so I need to uh, delve a bit deeper into that so let's start tearing into the cab All right, I got one door off. Um, there was one stubborn bolt that I had to uh, get in. Thankfully, I uh, used the cardboard, carbide blade on the, uh, the little oscillating tool and managed to get in there and get that off. Now I need to try and get the other door open because that door is locked or closed or something and I can't get it open. So uh, I need to uh, investigate further and see what I can do to get it open. Maybe it needs a kick. There we go. So pulling apart one of these old cars, one of the tools that you really may need to have is uh, one of these. This is actually an old school impact driver. So basically what it is, it takes a bunch of different screwdriver heads, but the benefit of this tool is that basically you uh, sit it into the screw and as you hit the tail of it, it actually, there's a cam in it that turns very slightly the, uh, the head and breaks loose the screw. And that's about the only way you're gonna get some of these old screws off without demolishing the head and making a whole mess. So must have for pulling this old thing apart. And uh, so far, hasn't been an absolute nightmare. It's you know, a lot of cutting and stuff with old bolts, but uh, not too bad. All right. 
right, a bit of wrestling and I managed to get the glove box open. And I love digging around in these old things. There's some very old EverReady batteries. I haven't seen anything that looks like this in a long, long time. And it feels very light. What else have we got in here? An old Bakelite light switch. Shotgun shell. Tray with some very, very old cigarette butts in it. <laughs> and check out this old radio, this is very cool. It's actually got the speaker built into it underneath. I'm sure that was a pretty snazzy thing in the day. All right, so when I was pulling the truck apart just then, I pulled off the radiator support and I saw that the original horn is still on there. And I really, really hope it still works. So I've got my uh, battery tester out now and I'm gonna give it a try because uh, oh, if this works, it'd be so cool. Nothing that way. All right, nothing for now, but uh, I'm gonna have a play and see if I can get this thing going. Cause I reckon it'd be really cool to have the old original horn on the truck. All right, so I was quite happy with yesterday's progress. Uh, we got pretty much every panel off of the truck and uh, now we've just got to do things like disconnect all the pedals, get rid of the steering column somehow, uh, handbrake gear stick. And basically the idea is to remove the cab uh, today. So let's see how we go. All right, I just did some research on what I need to do to get the, uh, the steering column out, and that looks like a lot of effort. Real, reality is, nobody is gonna ever use this steering column again, so uh, some might not be happy with me for this, but I'm just gonna cut all the linkages off of these, cut it off of the body. This chassis is more than likely gonna end up in scrap. I'll try and sell it, but I don't think anybody's gonna want it, so. Let's uh, start cutting. Sorry to all you purists out there, but uh, yeah, that's, that's far too much work to try and pull apart old rusty bolts and stuff. It's just, it's just not worth it. Well, I have the cab loose, and now I need to work out a way to get the cab off of the chassis, and I don't have any way to lift it besides myself, but that was half the reason for stripping everything out of the glass and everything. It's not actually very heavy. I have a bit of a plan. Let's see what I can do about uh, getting it off of here and uh, getting it onto the ground and somehow moving it into the shed. All right, so I've managed to get the car trailer, just wedge it in here next to the cab. My plan is, is I'm going to lift this up, put a couple of boards underneath, and then see if we can slide the cab across and onto the back of the car trailer. Once on the car trailer, then I can use it, use the car trailer to get it into the shed, and uh, then it's much easier to maneuver. But at the moment, while it's out here in the, uh, in the paddock, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, so... Uh, Let's give it a go. It 
it's off of the truck and onto the trailer. So uh, not too bad, not too bad. And uh, yeah, that's the hardest, most heavy bit of uh, the project to date. So now I have to get it out, uh, into the shed and uh, somehow work out how I'm going to get it onto the hoist to uh, maneuver it a bit more easily. was a lot less painful than I was actually expecting. It actually wasn't too bad to get it in here. Now that there's nothing else bolted to it, there's no windows in it, it's uh, basically just a very bare shell and uh, it's had some weight reduction. Uh, it's uh, not too bad to get in here. Now it's on the hoist. Now I can build a dolly for it so then I can move it around freely and, uh, and actually start working on the cab and uh, fixing up some of this stuff. So I very quickly knocked up a rolling frame out of the, um, the bits that I used to actually support the Alferrari while I was building it. I don't need that anymore. So uh, I'm repurposing it to hopefully uh, support the truck. All right, we have the body on a dolly that I can move around by hand very easily and, uh, and begin to work on. I can get it on and off the hoist. I can get it, move it around the workshop so that uh, I can still use the hoist for the Alferrari and the other cars. This is a monumentous occasion because it's the first time I've actually got the cab down on the ground. So I can actually have a look at it uh, and actually start working out what uh, rush repair panels I need and basically what we're going to do moving forward. So it's time to start formulating a plan. Let me take you around it now and sort of show you uh, the good, the bad and the ugly. Overall, um, I think it's pretty solid. Most of these floors, particularly here on the driver's side, are really good. Um, even these seals all the way along here are good. Just this corner here is, is uh, uh, a bit toast. And this corner uh, seems like these are the, the most common places where they go and there's replacement panels for these. So that I'm not too concerned about that. So there's corners on both sides. Same within the back. These were absolutely full of sand, like up to about this level, totally chock a block full of sand. So obviously it was a poor um, design and that's where sand and stuff kicked up and sort of sat inside the body and then just got wet and just rusted the body away. So it's got that on the bottom. Um, again, a little bit along the bottom at the edge at the back here, but nothing too crazy, a bit there. This bottom edge is, is sort of toast. So the, the bottom corner is at the rear of the cab. This corner of uh, the, the, the door, there's a little bit of rot in the bottom corner of the door and again around the back of the cab. But inside, these are all solid floors. This is all really good. Um, you know, a little bit at the back there, but nothing too drastic. Uh, coming around, this is the only real part of the cab floor that is rusted through. So there's a bit, you know, there's a patch here but uh, the rest of it is really solid. Again, this corner, again, where they, uh, they all rust away. But even this bottom edge here, amazingly for a truck that's probably never seen inside in its life, um, it's in really good nick. 
Moving around at the base of the pillar here, there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of rot in just there, but nothing too drastic. Most of this front corner looks pretty good. Even this is all is all quite solid. There's a little bit of rust in the corner in there, but uh, most of this is is pretty good. You know, the firewall is all nice and neat and tidy. I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, the windscreen frame, even the corner corner of the windows along here is all pretty good. Just a little bit right here. The rest of it's pretty good. Now the roof is complete toast. It looks like it's been jumped on and it's full of holes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna have to make that. All right, overall, a very productive first week on the uh, F600. I am very happy with how it is, I'm gonna to have to go away now and, uh, and order a bunch of the uh, repair panels. Uh, obviously, the ones that I can't order, I'm going to have to replace myself. But uh, I'm feeling pretty positive about it so far. I don't think it's, it's actually um, too crazy a project to get this thing going. Still have to look at the, uh, the, the, the doors and the other panels. There's a little bit of stuff on them, but they're not too bad. So I think that means it's time for an all new Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, Ford F-Series trucks first came to Australia in 1948 with the F1. Now in Australia, this was marketed as the Ford Freighter. They arrived at Ford's Geelong plant, which is just outside of Melbourne, ready to be assembled from Ford of Canada. Originally Ford's trucks were delivered to Australia with the flathead V8, but in late 1954, Ford moved to the all new Y block, meaning that this was one of the very first Y blocks to be delivered to Australia. And this picture here shows also a 1954 Ford truck, but still has the flathead V8. So this engine is 239 cubic inches or 3.9 liters and would have produced 130 horsepower, which is 20 horsepower more than the flathead V8 of the same capacity that it would have replaced. So this truck appears to have lived most of its life in South Australia, which is a very hot and dry climate, which appears to have preserved it quite well. So hopefully under Jeff's gentle touch, we will see it return to its former glory. Okay, well that was quite productive. I was um, quite happy that we managed to get the cab off of the truck. Yeah. I was always, I've been concerned about it for a while of how I was actually going to physically get it off of the truck. But by stripping it all down, it's not actually that heavy, which is quite handy because I've got no way to lift anything sort of I, outside. I don't, I don't know why you're worrying because I was available to help. With all, just, just, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, the buff you know, Mrs. Jeff, she, gonna, she yeah. got in there. And we, we got in there and we just, we smashed it. We smashed it we out. Smashed it. it was like a feather. Yes. Uh, and a, uh, a big thank you to uh, Ian from Econo Box Garage who sent me an Alberta plate for the collection. For the collection. Um, and he also noticed uh, he wanted to complete the Canadian coin collection um, that was sent through last week on the Oregon plate we've got. So, uh, yeah, thank you very that. much. And uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, yeah, well. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this this thing. So if you want to help him out, Patreon, very much appreciated. And uh, follow, and you get to see the videos today already with no ads. And uh, yeah, let Jeff know what yeah. you think. I love reading your comments. Yep, yeah, and we'll see you next time. See you soon. See you guys. Oh my God, I got it right too. Ford moved to the all new Y head block. No. No. Y block. Yes. It does not have a head. No. It's it a headless. It's got, it's got two of them, but yeah. Originally delivered with the, but in late 1954, Ford, oh damn it, moved. And this picture here shows a previous. This, this is. So this engine is 239 cubic inches or 2.3, no, 2.9. So this engine 3.9. Ah, and produces 120 horsepower, which. 130. Damn it, it's 20 horsepower more, 130. Okay. Then the same capacity, flathead V8. Then it replaced. That it replaced.